All right, chemistry. Here we go. Um, I said I was going to finish out page 58 and 59. So here we are. Let's finish out page 58 and 59. Most of it is review. Some of it you will need kind of like a new part of your reference table for, which we will talk about, obviously. Um, and while I am mentioning that, let me make sure that I have that page of the chem reference table. We need table H. And I'm going to take that and hopefully it'll move. It'll, hey, we got there. All right. So we'll need that when we get to page 59. But let's start on page 58. So matter and its phases. This is why I'm having y'all do this on your own. Or on your own. I'm still doing it, but we're just not going to do it in class. Um, gives us a little more time to kind of mess with the lab. As the temperature of a liquid decreases, the forces of attraction between the particles of a substance actually increase. So as the particles start to move slower, they actually get more and more attracted to each other because they can spend a little more time with each other. So they interact a little more often. They attract each other a little bit more. The particles move closer together. They arrange themselves in an orderly fashion. The motion of the particles is restricted. We say it's in the solid phase. Right, the process of liquid becoming a solid is freezing. Uh, you might see solidification at some point. They mean the same thing. It's not super common to see solidification, but if you do, just know what it means. Uh, when a solid changes to a liquid, obviously we call it melting. Uh, just make a little note. It also might be called fusion. Right, so uh, the process of turning from a solid to a liquid, we might call it fusion. Uh, during melting, you have to add a very specific amount of energy to convert it to a liquid, and we call that energy the heat of fusion, right? And this is why I brought up that up. Um, heat of fusion has a, a symbol H with subscript F, H for enthalpy, heat, H for heat, F for fusion, right? Um, now, we know solid to liquid is a phase change. There's also the phase change from solid straight to gas. And we call that sublimation. It happens when a solid turns directly, I can't write letters, into a gas. Uh, it obviously has a reverse, so freezing and melting are opposites of each other. Sublimation and deposition are opposites of each other. So the opposite of sublimation is deposition. Fire extinguishers that have like kind of foaming or powdering uh, effects when you when you use them, that's deposition. That's super cold carbon dioxide turning into a solid. So going straight from a gas, pressurized gas inside into a solid. When the temperature of a gas is very low and the pressure is high, it becomes a liquid, definite volume, shape of its container, when a liquid becomes a solid, um, we already know this, we call it freezing. Um, if the particles of a liquid have enough energy to overcome attractive forces, again, if they're moving slow, they have attractive forces, but the faster they move, right, I hear sirens in the background, I don't know if y'all hear that. Um, they move faster, they can overcome that attraction, and they can escape from the surface of a liquid. That process is called vaporization. Yes, this is the premise behind, never mind, vaporization. <laughs> Y'all probably knew where I was going that. Anyway, um, evaporation is very specific, right? It says surface. This is only at the surface. If you're talking about evaporation, we're only talking about it happening at surface. You don't evaporate from the bottom of a jar. You don't evaporate from the side of a jar. You can boil from the side or the bottom of something, but evaporation is only the surface. When you boil or vaporize something, to, and again, a specific amount of heat energy, it's the heat of vaporization. Again, shocking. Um, it has a special symbol, H for heat, V for vaporization. The reverse of evaporation is condensation. And again, you guys should remember that from once upon a time, maybe seventh or eighth grade, maybe even elementary school. Um, any reverse phase changes will always happen at the same temperature. So the melt, the f 
freezing and melting point of water and ice, respectively, are zero degrees Celsius. All right. We already talked about this uh, a little before the midterm, but the freezing and boiling points of everything that's relevant on the table is on table S. Last thing here, uh, oh, second to last thing, evaporation depends on three things. Uh, the nature of the liquid is something that we refer to as volatility. If you hear that something is volatile, all that means is it changes from a liquid to a gas easily. So if something that's a volatile liquid is just something that will evaporate very easily. Um, temperature of the liquid, hot water evaporates more quickly than cold. Cold water will evaporate, right? Water on the roads here in Syracuse, uh, if there's water on the roads and it's only 20 degrees outside, eventually later it'll still evaporate. That water will dissipate and the road will be dry again. And it's not necessarily because the water sunk into the asphalt. It will evaporate into the air. It just takes a lot longer. And then the surface area, right? Surface area of the liquid, a puddle of water will evaporate more quickly than a bucket, right? So a puddle of water is spread out. A bucket is kind of concentrated. There's only so much showing. The more liquid is showing, the more surface area there is, it'll evaporate faster, right? The very last thing here is vapor pressure. Now, this is the pressure that exists between vapor and liquid. So the vapor, the gas above a liquid and the surface of the liquid, that pressure that's being exerted is called vapor pressure. It rises slowly at low temperatures and climbs quickly the higher the temperature goes. When you heat a liquid in an open container, the vapor pressure will rise until it's the same as the pressure of the atmosphere above, right? And then later, the liquid will boil. Uh, so vapor pressure, I want to be very clear. Vapor pressure is the pressure pushing upwards not the pressure pushing downwards. It's a pressure that's, that's exerted kind of upwards from vapor trying to escape the surface of the water, right? Um, liquids can boil at different temperatures. Water is supposed to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. And at one atmosphere, or 101.3 kilopascals, that is the normal boiling point of that liquid. That's the normal boiling point for water. I could get water to boil lower than 100 degrees Celsius. I would need to change the pressure. I could make it so that water boils higher than 100 degrees Celsius. I would need to change the pressure, right? Table H, which I've pulled up right here next to it, is the vapor pressure of liquids. And if I look, if the vapor pressure here, the dashed line represents normal conditions, water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. If the pressure is higher, let's say that we bring the pressure all the way up to 150, Water won't boil until, right here, about 110, 112 degrees Celsius. I'll take 10 more degrees. If I lower the pressure, say to 50 degrees, or 50, sorry, 50 kilopascals, 50 kPa, then water will actually boil at like 82, 83 degrees Celsius. That's how to read this. If you know the pressure, you can go over to the substance that you're worried about, and you can find out what temperature it will boil at, right? Water, it, if you double the pressure, if I bring it all the way up to about 200, water won't boil until about 117, 118 degrees Celsius, right? Each of these little boxes is five. Now, this is not always super useful, but it's something that you could be asked about. They might ask you about the pressure of propanone or ethanol or water or ethanoic acid. It's not because I expect you to memorize it. I just want you to know where to look. If you're asked about the vapor pressure of a liquid, it's going to be here on table H. These questions largely refer to table H, right? The ones that I would like you to look at, the ones that I would like you to do, are question one, question five, Question six, question eight, and question nine. Right, one, two, three, four, five. It's only five questions. This is this is what you will submit. You should see the assignment on my CBA. Um, again, the, the reason I had y'all do this on your own is because I didn't want to spend you know a little bit. 
however much time this was, maybe like a 10 minute little thing here. Uh, but I really wanted to get to a couple of labs. Um, and I, I want to make sure that I can review some of the more difficult stuff from Thermo before your test next Friday. Okay. So there is that stuff. You have these questions to do one, five, six, eight, and nine. Make sure you do those, submit them to the assignment. Again, you will see it on my CBA. And until next time, I will see y'all. All right. Take care. Be good kids.